what is the state price? Uh, we will discuss the idea coming from the binomial model, but uh, using this terminology and idea of state price. Uh, what we will discuss will be, of course, in the same thing, same binomial model, uh, but some prefer to use this terminology, and this can be applied to some other situations. So uh, why don't we do uh, discuss this thing using this concept? Perhaps one example. Um, we are thinking of the situation where there are two possible states in the future. So two possible states. Um, one simple example would be you just think about tomorrow's weather. Maybe it will rain. And maybe it will not rain. So if you think about these two states, um, and if the prices of assets are different in these two different states, and what will be the implication on the equilibrium of the financial market? So that's what we will think about here. So say we have two possible states, rain and no rain tomorrow. And we have, um, let's say we have two assets. So one, one asset, um, the value of this asset will be different depending on whether there's rain or no rain. And let's say the value of some stock, one stock, I'll, I'll just call it asset A, it will be $20 if there is no rain, and um, say $18 if there is no rain. And also, let's say the current value of this stock, of this asset, is $19. And there's another asset, asset B. Um, that pays um, $1 if uh, it rains tomorrow and one dollar even if it doesn't rain. Okay, um, I'll, I'll change the number a bit. So here I'll say 17 and 18 so that it's the return is a bit higher. <coughs> And let's say the, the price of this asset B is um, 0 0.99 dollars, 99 cents. <coughs> so in this situation, uh, we have two assets and we have two possible states in the future and we know the current prices. Now, why is it interesting? Uh, in this situation, if we have this much information, then any other asset you can think of can be uh, the, the price of any other asset can be determined completely from this information. And let's think about why before we get into the, the algebra. The, the reason is there are only two uh, possible states in the future, and you have these two assets, and by combining these two assets, A and B, in different proportion, you can generate any possible payoff schedule as you like. So if you want to have generate, create an asset that pays one and zero in the future, you can do that by combining A and B uh, 
properly, you can also generate or create an asset with a payup schedule of 0 and 1. And by combining these two, you can generate any other payup schedule as you like. If you want, say, 3.5 and 0 0.9, you can just multiply the first asset portfolio by 3.5 and second by 0 0.9. So as long as we have these two, we can determine any other price. Um, and we will determine all the other prices using this, the, the exact asset that I just wrote down here. So this, this uh, given information, using these two, we will uh, create two new assets. One is the asset that pays one if it uh, if it doesn't rain and zero if it rains another asset zero pays zero and one and let's call this c and d and we can determine the price current price of c and current price of d from the information given here how do we do that uh, it's actually easier to go from the left side to the A and B, from C and D to A, B, rather than the other way. Um, so if you call this current price, we don't know what, but let's call this X, let's call this Y. Then what's the relationship between X and Y and the other numbers? For asset A, if you buy 20 of asset C, and 17 of asset D, you will get a, an asset that looks exactly like asset A. So that means 20x plus 17y should be exactly 18. So this is the price that you need to pay to buy 20 units of asset C. This is how much you need to pay to buy 17 units of asset D. If you buy 20 units of asset C and 17 units of asset D, uh, the, this portfolio will give you exactly uh, the same payoff as asset A. So the value of the cost of creating this portfolio should be exactly the same as buying asset A. Similarly, for asset B, if you buy one unit of asset C, one unit of asset D, you will get exactly the portfolio that has the identical payoff as asset B, which is 0 0.99. Uh, from here, you can uh, solve these uh, two equations. Then if you multiply this by 17, then we'll have uh, 17x plus 17y is 17 times 0 0.99 is 16.83. Um, <coughs> so if you subtract the second from the first, you have 3x equal uh, 1.17. So in the end, price of x is... Uh, 3 over uh, 1.17 over 3 and y is um, 0 0.99 minus x so it's 0 0.99 minus 1.17 over 3 <coughs> so from this algebra you can determine the value of x and value of y and once you determine value of x and y then you can determine price of any other asset for example if some asset asset e pays uh, let's say asset e is a call option with a strike price of 18 on a if it's a call option on a with a strike price of 18 its payoff will be 2 and 0 
And we can easily see that the value of this uh, option is 2 times x, which is um, 1.17 over 3 times 2. Uh, if you come up with any other asset, it will be very, uh, quite straightforward to determine the current price of any other asset. So now let's step back and um, think about the rule of this SSC and D. SSC is the asset that pays $1 only if it doesn't rain. It doesn't give you anything when it rains. Asset D pays uh, only if it rains, and it doesn't pay anything if it doesn't rain. Uh, so the price of X, the price X, is the price that people are willing to pay now for $1 income in case it doesn't rain. And why? is the price that people are willing to pay for one dollar income when it uh, when it rains so the we may consider x and y as the price people are willing to pay for each state and that's why we call we may call x and y as um, state prices so x is the price of the first state, y is the price of the second state. And in this scheme, the asset value uh, can be understood as the state price multiplied by the payoff in each state. Um, or to put it another way, the asset value is state price weighted sum of the payoff of the asset uh, in future states. In the binomial model, uh, the, in the way we describe, discuss binomial model, binomial model in the textbook, uh, it's exactly same idea. We just use somewhat different um, terminology and notation, but it's the same idea. If we extend this uh, state price ideas uh, a bit further, then what we can say is the following. If there are n possible states, and if um, M assets in the economy, and if the number of assets in the economy is greater than or equal to the number of possible states, then in this case, um, we have enough assets so we can determine the price of all the states. Of course, we are assuming that the M assets are different from each other sufficiently so that the um, <coughs> each asset has some uh, contribution to the problem. So in this situation, then if we can determine price of every state, then we can determine price of every asset, any other asset, all the derivative, everything can be determined. Um, and the, in that sense, Uh, we call this complete market. That is, the market is complete. You can hedge for any possible situation, and there is nothing that we require further for this market to function properly. 
But if m is less than n, if the number of assets, we have less assets than the number of states, then of course the, we cannot determine price of every state and market is not complete. Um, in that situation, we may not be able to determine um, all the prices, uh, price of every asset um, in this fashion. And um, it's not possible to hedge uh, all the possible um, all the possible events uh, in a market like this. Um, and Arrow, the, the economist Arrow, Kenneth Arrow, talked about this idea in 1960s. And that's the, the, the same idea that you will learn, um, you discuss with the binomial model in the textbook.